Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I will talk about how to use Azure Data Factory to only copy new files from the source folder into the destination folder. And the way we're gonna determine what files are new is by looking into the destination folder, figuring out what is the latest modified date file there, and then using that latest modified date as the starting point for the new file extraction from the source folder. Now, you would think that something like this, a business scenario that should be very common, should be a very simple one-step process, a tick box somewhere or a field or function to populate. Turns out it's not that simple. It's actually a pretty involved process. So I will uh, do my best to cover it in some detail. However, I will keep it at a level 100. So if even if you're not a Azure Data Factory expert, you should be able to follow along pretty nicely. So let me set up uh, what we're trying to do. First, let me show you that I have a data lake or blob storage account where I have two folders. I have a sales folder and I have a sales sync folder where sales will be my uh, my source. So you see I have 12 files in here that were copied up, uploaded on 427. And then I'm gonna take those files and move them over and copy them over into the sales sync destination folder. So let's go ahead and click into sales sync and to make sure there is nothing there. Step back up and let's go through the pipeline components. I try to keep it very simple. So I just have a sales data set here that is connected to my sales folder. And um, I also have a destination data set that is connected to the sales sync folder. So normally all what we need to do is create a copy new files activity. And then we would specify our sales data set in a source. We would specify our sales to data set as a destination we can keep hit run, the thing will run and then copy all of the files from source into destination. Now you will notice that I've made one change here and I've added this filter by less modified and where I wanna start is I wanna look up the max time variable and use that as a starting point in my copy activity. So basically the key to this whole thing is to populate the max time variable in such a way that we will go look into the destination folder, find, look at all the files in the destination folder, find the one with the latest date, and then use that modified date as the value for this variable max time. And then, so we will do that in the previous, in the prior steps. And then by the time we get to copy new files, we already know what the max time is. So the copy activity will just look into that and just copy incremental files into the destination. So it turns out, as I said before, process is pretty involved. So let's go step by step and see all the operations that have to take place before we can get to this copy step. So we start our journey with the get metadata activity. So what we do here is we say get metadata and we're gonna use our sales to data set uh, to get metadata from. Now you will notice that I've created an argument and that argument is child items. So basically what this will do, uh, this get metadata activity will connect to the sales data, sales to folder, and then iterate through all of the sales folder and make a list of all of the files in that folder. Now, please know that that list will only contain file name and extension. So it will not have the full folder path to the file. Okay, now that I have a list of all of the files, I'm gonna go into for each activity, which is another activity we need to add. And then in this for each activity, we will use this get file list activity output child items as the source for the items in the for each loop. So now that I know which activities and which uh, items rather to go through, we could go into what to do with those with, with the next steps. So for each file, we're going to do two activities. So I'm going to drill down yet again. And what we're going to do is we're going to look up file metadata. Now we only have the file name. So we have to connect to sales to data set. So again, our destination data set. And in this data set, we're going to now look up an argument of last modified. The next step is if condition. So what we're going to do in the if condition is we're going to compare whether our initial variable value is greater or smaller than the date that's coming from the current file. Here you can see the formula for that logic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a greater function. We're gonna look up the value of the last modified date on the current file from the get file metadata activity. 
and we're going to compare it with our variable max time. Now, if this comparison is true, then we're going to have to do something in the next step. So let's take a look at what we'll do if this activity is true. So we'll click into true. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to be setting up two variables. Now, let me roll back a little bit and show you where I define those variables. So once you have the pipeline created, you can click on variables. And then here I created three variables. I created max time, which is the variable I use for uh, figuring out when uh, to start my incremental file loads. I have the file name, which will have the name of the file that had the latest uh, modified date in the destination folder. And I also created final time, and this is the variable I created just for debugging purposes. So now we go back to our screen with the set variables activities. And what we do is we have set max time and set file name. So we go to set max time and we're going to set up the value of our variable. So we specify which variable we're going to be writing into. So it's going to be max time. And the value we're going to be writing into this variable is this. So here uh, is the code. So we're going to look up the output of our get file metadata activity. Then we're going to get the last modified date. And because we already know that this value is greater than whatever was in the variable before. So our old variable value will get overwritten with this. And because we're going to do this for every file, by the time we're done iterating through every file in the destination folder, and by the time we're done comparing the old value of the variable with the current value of the file, in the variable we will end up with the latest modified date of the file in that folder. So by the time we're done with this activity, by the time we're done iterating through every, every file, our variable for max time should have the latest modified date. And that's the date that we're now passing into the start UTC box here in the filter by last modified. Now the very last step here is set variable set final time. All I want to do is I want to check what was the variable value that ended up at the end of the processing. So I just want to write it into the final time. So then I run this pipeline and debug it, I could take a look at the output and see what actually got written just for testing purposes. So let's not forget right now in the destination folder, there is nothing. So when I run it the first time, only all of the files will get copied into the destination folder. So let's take a look at what happened after our pipeline had a chance to run. We see that we only have four values uh, here in the output, uh, because there's no files in the destination folder, it didn't loop through anything. It just went into copy new files. And if I click here, you see that all 12 files got copied from source to destination. Now, if I look at the set final time, then we see that that value is 220, 2021, 327. So how did that variable value got populated? Well, what's interesting, when I created the variables, I actually wrote that value I hard coded it to begin with. And the fact that this variable did not change tells us that there was no files in the destination folder. So all of the files effectively got copied. Let's check if the files are actually there. So here I am clicking on a cell sync. And here you go. We see that on 52854, uh, all of the 12 files got copied into the destination folder. Let's run our job again and see if how many files are going to get copied this time around. Okay, so I just reran my pipeline again, and you will notice that we ended up with a lot more line items in our output. And the reason that happened is because we're checking get metadata for every individual file. So let's just check a couple of line items here. So our first get file list, if I click on this, I see the list of all 12 files in the output. Now for each, let's click on that. So it, it finds 12 items in, uh, in the for, uh, for loop. And then we're going to be looking up the last modified for every file in our folder. So we do that 12 times. And then we go into the if condition. And then in the if condition, you see we're setting our max time to whatever is the greater value for the file. And then uh, once we're done running all that stuff, we're doing copy new files. So because we already have the latest files in the destination folder, second time around, we should have no files copied. So let's verify that. And sure enough, files read zero. So we did uh, the, the variable was populated correctly. And the reason the way we can validate it is we're going to click here to see what the output 
uh, for the variable was, and we see that it was 429, 21, 553, which is today's date, uh, which is the time of the previous pipeline run. So again, is it a lot of work just to get that simple value for the latest, uh, most recent file in the destination folder? Yes, it is. Are there any limitations on this? Yes, there are. All get file list, um, and for each, they all have certain limitations. I believe get file list can only get up to 5,000 items, and there is size limitations on how big the array can be. So uh, if your folders are re relatively small, reasonably small, less than, I think, 5,000 files in them, this approach will work very well. It gives you a very robust way of uh, getting incremental files, because let's say your job fails, something else happened, Every time you restart the job, it's gonna just look into the destination, and then it's gonna be smart enough to figure out how to get the newest files. It also works very well when you have the same source for your dev, test, and prod environments. So you don't have to worry about rewriting files, copying files, so this is pretty robust. I like it a lot. However, having to do so much work for such a simple task does sound a little bit ridiculous. And that's about it. Hope it was helpful.